Hey guys, it's Go here from Amon14, and I'm here with you guys today, and I am bringing you a video describing all of the secrets that I have learned while playing Warrior. This video will offer as a continuation of my Sleeper 101 video, and I think that as Warriors, and probably even people wanting to counter Warriors, you're really going to enjoy this video. I'm going to do my best to give you everything that I have learned about the Warrior, I have never swapped away from Warrior. I've played Axe and Sword Warrior. So let's begin. The first thing I'm going to show you is my overall build and where I am standing. So you want to be using the Counter Mask, the Thunder Kite, the Magic Box, Flame Book or Stone Book, Stellar Statue or Cage Statue if you're using Easy Breezy. Do not use Take It Slow. You will reduce the enemy attack speed and therefore your counter rate and therefore your damage. It's pretty much a self-nerf. Finally, you want to be using the Storm Necklace right now. Until these skills come out, we'll see what the Abyss Necklace can do. But the Clone, or sorry, the Storm Necklace is going to complement your build more than anything else. What a lot of people don't know about Clone is that clone can proc your counter and proc your combo. So this will displace damage from you, and you will still be getting your counter damage off of the clone. My overall stats at the moment is 84% counter strike. I would not swap to the warrior. If you will be anywhere under 70%, you won't have a good time. My crit damage is 1,132%. My counter multiplier is 6,744%. And my base stats just keep going up from, you know, tech upgrades and everything like that. My souls, I prioritized my counter soul on upgrades. But I still distributed some of my soul essence to my defensive souls. And then to my global attack soul. And I get pretty high on crit sometimes, so I supplemented some of that with some more crit damage, and it sure does smack sometimes. Finally, this is my overall favorite skill setup. Clone will suffer from skill crit. It will suffer in some situations, and so I have some other skill sets for you here that you can test and use at your own will. And see which one works better for you, right? Just generally, I think that my favorite one selected right now is probably going to be the most useful. But you have the Uno, number one, that has Easy Breezy. And then you have the second one, Dose, that has Heroic Descent. Now, why am I using Heroic Descent? Well, Heroic Descent actually sort of counters Blitz Assault. Because when a fight starts, Blitz Assault will negate three full seconds of damage. And Heroic Descent, when you activate it, lasts for ten full seconds. Let me pull it up real quick for you. It lasts ten full seconds. And so when you use this, you are still going to get seven seconds out of your skill duration you're going to get more damage that will be hitting them while you are countering so this works really good into blitz assault when you're having a problem with the matchup try it out for yourself i have definitely found some use finally for this skill because i think a lot of people thought it was pretty much trash there is some use to it and then, of course, you have the first set with Easy Breezy. And that's always a good bet. Like I said, take it slow, will nerf yourself. But Easy Breezy will reduce the enemy damage while you still counter. So it is a nerf to the enemy. Allows you to survive longer while you counter them. This is my favorite PAL setup so far. We have the Electric Pup still. We have the Hipster Tortoise. Everybody should be using this. 
We have the Treasure Dragon right now. We have the Rainbow Guardian, which does cost a little bit of money. I wouldn't do anything crazy to try to force yourself getting this pet. But if you can afford $16 on Legend of Mushroom, I, and you, excuse me, and you would like to focus your warrior gameplay, I seriously suggest that you get this pal. Finally, we're using the deer, and the whole time I've been warrior, I have used the deer, and I don't plan to ever give it up. It allows you to survive longer to proc more counters. For your mount choice, there are two mounts that you want to focus on. That's the Pyre Breaker, which will give you more crit rate to complement your gear and crit damage to complement that crit. Along with, if you decide to use Worldly Snare, at some point you have your souls developed, you want to experiment with the skill and give it another chance, I suggest that you do when you have your souls and etc. This will synergize with that skill very, very well. The optimal pet that you are going to want, though, is the Blue Ox. This, combined with the Angel Deer, will give you 25% damage res when you're playing the Axe Warrior. And CC Reduction is overpowered in every single RPG or PvP game in which this stat exists. You don't want to forego this. You don't want to overlook this. This is an extremely good mount. Finally, for your Artifact... The best performing one at the moment is the Chaotic Warlord's Hammer. This allows you to get a little bit more damage off of your basic attacks and helps you deal with the enemy clone. So, my prayer statue as well. I believe I almost forgot. I am using three global counter damage, one global HP, and one crit damage bonus. I also have set one here with two global counter, one global attack, one crit damage, and crit res. However, I am getting more use out of three counter, one HP, and there could be an argument that global attack would function better than crit damage, but it's definitely not worth risking it right now to try to get lucky and roll that. I am saving for Prey Rush, and we will see what happens when that comes. So, a couple of other pals I want to touch on before I do some showcase fights is that the Hydro Sprite is pretty viable on the Warrior when you are against other Warriors or you are in a very long matchup. It will allow you to sustain more with your shield. It will allow you to survive more with your Blitz Assault. And maybe if they don't have Hydro Sprite, you are going to be countering during your earlier proc of your Blitz Assault. It's pretty useful, but kind of situational. It's really best against Warriors, which might not be happening so much for you. You have Benny, which is pretty useful, generally speaking. But I would, if you have the Toothpaste Pal here, the Rainbow Guardian, I would drop Benny and use this. And the Treasure Dragon, I am using this for the basic attack crit damage, but also the skill crit rate will make your starts of your fights more consistent. It will allow you to eliminate their clone as quick as possible. Clone Strike is countered by high AoE and skill crit because during the beginning of the fight, you know, the skill crit and the everything just destroys it, right? And you get no value out of your clone. So it's pretty nice at times. Go ahead and swap these things at your own will and see what you think about it. You know, what works best for you depending on your position in the game. The last thing I want to mention about playing Warrior in general is make sure that you're focusing your crit rate and your Counter-Strike gear. This is going to help with your Worldly Snare. This is going to synergize with your Pyre Breaker. And if you're playing Warrior without Counter, you are just not going to have a good time. <laughs> and, and that's just that. It's just not going to be fun. So I would really suggest focusing Counter and supplementing Counter on your gear 
with your crit rate. Finally, the Heroic Descent skill. I would like to touch on this a little bit more. You will want to use Heroic Descent whenever you are in a situation where you are against Blitz, Blitz Assault and your skills are getting wasted and you need just a little bit extra damage to win the fight. I would use this because when you use it, it lasts for 10 seconds. And so Blitz Assault only lasts for three. And most other skills in the game that would be getting negated by Blitz Assault, this one is still getting 70% of its value, right? You're getting seven seconds out of the 10. Compare that to Easy Breezy. That is a five second active skill where Blitz Assault is a three second active skill. And you will see that with Easy Breezy, you are left with less than half of its usefulness in the fight. Whereas Heroic Assault, or Descent, excuse me, against Blitz Assault, you will get 70% of the usefulness. So it definitely works when you're having trouble with Blitz Assault. So now I will go ahead and I will do exactly what I did in the Sleeper 101 video. I will showcase to you where I'm at, how these builds are useful. And last time, you know, I showed you we can sleep. This time I'm going to show you we can also eat. So we will go on and we will try Kiji first off. He's been putting in a lot of work. He is just a very good opponent regardless of me countering him. There's a bit of a power difference as there always has been. He has a better artifact. He has a better mount. But let's go ahead and see if we can win with our favorite setups. Let's make sure that they are active. And let's see. You see, he really does one-shot my clone, right? And that's the problem with clone, is that you it really can be taken out early. Well, that was like an anime battle. That was really good. Um, it can be taken out early, just like it was, and therefore, you're not going to get a lot of usefulness from it. In that situation, I would rather use the Heroic Descent than the Clone Strike, because you're getting 7 seconds of damage. You're getting... Virtually nothing with the clone in that fight, right? So, we will use it also against... Let's try... Uncle Touchy. This will be like a, a comparison for your near power fight, right? Like I said, we're going to eat. And then finally, let's do like a really challenging one. Let's try Shafty at 19 million. And we are at 17.1. So let's try Shafty again. Clones are pretty much gone before Blitz Assault is over. And... The nature of the warrior is to survive, survive, survive. And eventually, hopefully, if everything works out for you and you have your build correctly, you will win your fight. This is pretty crazy, really. This is a really great one. But I think that we will come out right here. So he did not have the skill crit. Let me go here. He has some decent skill crit, so maybe it just kind of RNG'd him a little bit, but we still won, so we really can't complain. We're still perfectly capable of doing around 2 million upwards of a power difference, even following all the information that has been gathered in the game since our Sleeper 101 video. So everything here is extremely viable now 
Bulgogi has put in work. You know, if you saw my Sleeper 101 video, I happened to beat Bulgogi. He was a big fan of being on YouTube and getting beaten. So he's been putting in absolute work. I mean, we're friends. He's, he's a great guy. I, I have nothing res but respect for the guy. So it, it is what it is, right? But even at a 3.4 million power difference, I'm sorry, Bulgogi. I'm going to show YouTube how close it still can be. And this kind of information is very useful in family brawls. It's very useful in a lot of... <sighs> Never mind, he really got me with this one, guys. I'm not even going to lie. He really got me there. Let's try one more real fast. And let's see if I can display to you the usefulness of Easy Breezy in situations like this. So we only got 50%. Let's go to our Easy Breezy setup. And let's see if we do any better. We are looking at a 3 0.4 million power difference though so it's not really the most fair comparison but let's let him redeem himself guys i mean last time i got him this time i really can't so big credits to you bulgogi you have been putting in work even still if you think about a fight like this in the context of a family brawl you know so Maybe someone in your family sees that they're put up against someone with 3 million difference on them, and they think they're just going to get smoked. I mean, even though I feel like I'm getting pretty well destroyed here, I still knock down 50% of his HP. That can lead to a family brawl victory in some cases. Anything helps in that situation. And finally, I will display to you the usefulness of the Hydro Sprite. We'll go ahead and use this setup for skills. And we are going to put Giraffic Sark in the video today. He's doing very good. He, as a warrior, I mean, he, he's very, very good. I mean, he's got 100% counter strike. He's got pretty decent counter multiplier. But his tech, you know, his base stats are a lot higher than me. He's just a little bit above me in power. Can we win? Clone does a pretty good job here. Like I said, you know, clone is going to be one of your most useful skills. You can see that my skills are now faster. And that is because I am using the Hydro Sprite. He might get me here. I think it will depend on the usefulness of my clone, and we got him. So, if I was to use this skill setup, or sorry, this PAL setup, I would lose this fight. The Hydro Sprite was necessarily there, because he is also using Hydro Sprite, and if I don't have it, he will proc his Blitz Assault before me, and he will therefore get more damage off than I will and I will not be able to survive and I will lose the fight. So guys, this is my general thoughts on the warrior at this point. You know, you have various ways of working around your counters, around your skills that people are now obtaining in the game. You might be wondering, there's all these mounts, there's all these artifacts. What do I want to go for? You know, these are the ones that you want to prioritize right now. Forego the other ones at the moment. You know, we do our best to adapt to the emerging meta as it comes. So, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. I really hope that this helps, especially following my Sleeper 101 video and my Worldly Snare video. I know that I had some negative opinions about our Worldly Snare skill here. But I think... As the game goes on, we're getting a little bit more viability from it. Is it the best choice? I would say that there are others, but if you have the crit rate, the crit damage, and you kind of want to end the fights fast to where the 24-second cooldown won't be a problem for you, 
it's pretty good. I think it's very good against archers. And yeah, guys, as always, I really appreciate your support on my channel. And thank you very much for watching. Make sure that you check into the Discord in the description link. And I will also provide QA analysis there for general thoughts and insights from very good players that I know. I appreciate you very much once again, and I'll see you next time.